The Cube presents Dell Technologies World, brought to you by Dell. Hi everyone, welcome back to Dell Technologies World 2022. You're watching the Cube's coverage of this three-day coverage, wall to wall. My name is Dave Vellante, John Furrier is here, Lisa Martin, David Nicholson. Talk of the town here is data. And one of the big announcements at the show is Snowflake and Dell partnering up, building ecosystems. Snowflake reaching into on-prem, allowing customers to actually access the Snowflake data cloud without moving the data, or if they want to move the data, they can. This is really one of the hotter announcements at the show. Martin Glenn is here, he's the Senior Director of Storage Product Management at Dell Technologies, and Clark Patterson is the Head of Product Marketing for Snowflake. Guys, welcome. Thanks for having us. So a lot of buzz around this, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Clark, you and I have talked about the need to really extend your data vision, and this really is the next step, first step ever you've taken on-prem. Explain the motivation for this from your customer's perspective. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you step back and think about Snowflake's vision and, and our mission of mobilizing the world's data, it's all around trying to break down silos for however customers define what a silo is, right? So we've, we've had a lot of success breaking down silos from a workload perspective, where we've expanded the platform to be data warehousing and data engineering and machine learning and data science and all the, all the uh, kind of compute intensive uh, ways that people work with us. We've, we've also had a lot of success in, sh in our sharing capabilities and how we, we're breaking down silos of organizations, right? So it's, I can, I can share data more seamlessly within my, my team, I can do it across uh, to totally disparate organizations and break down silos that way. So this partnership is really like the next leg of the stool, so to speak, where we're, we're breaking down the silos of the, 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 the data and where the data lives ultimately, right? So up until this point, cloud, all, all focus there. Now we have this opportunity with Dell to expand that on into on-premises world and people can bring all those data sets together. And the data target for this, Martin, is Dell ECS, right? Your object store and mm -hmm. it's got S3 compatibility. Explain that. Yeah, we've actually got uh, sort of two flavors. We'll start with ECS, which is our turnkey object storage solution. Object storage offers sort of the ultimate in flexibility, you know, uh, potential performance, ease of use, right? Which is why it fits so well with Snowflake's mission for sort of unlocking you know, the data within the, uh, within the data center. So we'll offer it to begin with with ECS, and then we also recently announced our software-defined object scale solution. So we'll right. add even more flexibility there. Okay, and the, Clark, the way it works is I, I can now access non-native Snowflake data using what? Materialized views, external tables, how does that work? Some, some combination of the, mm -hmm. all the above. Um, so we've had in, in Snowflake a, a, a capability called external tables, which we refer to. It goes hand in hand with this notion of external stages. Basically, there's a, uh, through the combination of those two, two capabilities, it's, it's a metadata layer on data wherever it resides. So customers have actually used this in Snowflake for data lake data outside of Snowflake in the cloud up until this point. So it's, a, it's effectively an extension of that functionality into the Dell on-premises world um, so that we can tap into those things. So we use the external stages to expose all the metadata about what's in the Dell environment, and then we build external tables in Snowflake so that data looks like it is in Snowflake, and then the experience for the, the analyst or whomever it is is exactly as though that data lives in the Snowflake world. Okay, so for a while you've allowed non-native Snowflake data, but it had to be in the cloud. Correct. This is the first time it's on-prem, that's the, that's the innovation here. Okay, and if I want to bring it into the cloud, can I? Yeah, the connection here will help in a migration sense as well, right? So, so that's the, the, the good thing is it's, it's really giving the user the choice. So we, we are integrating together as, as partners to make the connection as seamless as possible. Um, and then the end user will say like, look, I've got data that needs to live on premises for whatever reasons, data sovereignty, whatever they, they decide, and they can, they can keep it there and still do the analytics on it in place. But if there's a need and a, a desire to use this as an opportunity to migrate some of that data to the cloud, that connection between our two platforms will make that easier. Well, Michael always says, hey, customer choice, we're flexible, so you're cool with that? That's, that's <laughs> been the mission since we kind of came together, right? Is, if, uh, if our customers needed to stay in their data center, if that makes more sense from a cost perspective or a, you know, a data gravity perspective, then they can do that. Uh, but we also want to help them unlock the value of that data. So if they need to copy it up to the public cloud to take advantage of it, we're going to integrate directly with Snowflake to make that really easy to do. So there are engineering integrations here, obviously, that's right. required. Can you, can you describe what that looks like? Um, when is this, give us the details on when it's available. 
Sure. So uh, it's going to be sort of second half this year that you'll see. We're, we're demoing it this week, but the availability will be second half this year. And uh, fundamentally, it's the, way, it's the way Clark described it, that uh, Snowflake will reach into our S3 interface using the standard S3 interface. We're qualifying between the way they expect that S3 interface to present the data and the way our platform works, just to ensure that there's smooth interaction between the two. So that's sort of the first uh, simplest use case. And then the second example we gave where the customer can copy some of that data up to the public cloud, we're basically copying between two S3 buckets and making sure that Snowflake's um, Snow Pipe is aware that data is being made available and can easily ingest it. So. And then that just goes into a, 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 a virtual warehouse um, exactly. and the customer doesn't know or care. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. The compute, compute happens in Snowflake the way it does in any other manner. And then I'm, I'm, and I know you got a crawl, walk, run, second half of this year, but I would imagine Okay, you're going to start with AWS, correct? Uh, and then eventually go to other clouds? I mean, is that going to take other technical integrations? I mean, obviously, so should we, should we assume there's a roadmap here, or is this a one and done? I would assume that. I mean, based on our multi-cloud approach, that's, that's kind of our approach, at least, yeah. Kind of makes sense, right? I mean, that would, would seem to be a natural progression. My other thought was, okay, I've got operational systems, they might be running you know, transaction systems running on a, on a power max. Yeah. Is there a way to uh, uh, get the data into an object store and make that available? Now, there's, now that opens up even more workloads. I know you're not committing to doing that, but it just <laughs> conceptually it seems like something a customer might want to do. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, I think when we brought our teams together, we started with a blank slate. It was, what's the best solution we can build? We landed on this sort of first step. But we got lots of feedback from a lot of our big joint customers about you know, this system over there, this potential integration over here, and whether it's you know, PowerMax type systems or other file workloads with uh, native Snowflake data types. Um, you know, I think this is, this is just the beginning, right? We have lots of potential here. And if, I, I don't think you've announced pricing, right? It's too no. premature for that, but have you thought about, and how are you thinking about the pricing model? I mean, you're a consumption-based pricing. Yep. Is that kind of how this is going to work? Or is there a, sort of a new pricing model, or haven't you figured that out yet? I don't know if you've got any details on that, but I, I, from a Snowflake perspective, I would assume it's consistent with what, the, how our customers engage with us today. Yep. Um, and we'll offer, we'll offer both possibilities, right? So you can either continue with the standard, you know, sort of CapEx motion, maybe that's the most optimal for you from a cost perspective, or you can take advantage through our Apex uh, option, right? So you can do consumption on-prem also. Okay, so it could be a dual model, right? right. If, depending on what the customer wants. If they're a Snowflake customer, obviously it's going to be consumption-based, yeah. however you guys price. Um, what's happening, Clark, in, in the market? Explain why Snowflake has so much momentum uh, and you know, traction in the marketplace. So it's like I spent a lot of time doing analysis of why we win and lose, mm -hmm. core, core part of my role. And you know, there's a couple of, 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 there's really three things that come up consistently as to why people, people are really excited about the Snowflake platform. One is the most simplest thing of all, it, it feels like, is just ease of use and it just works, right? And, and I think the way that this platform was built for the cloud from the ground up all the way back 10 years ago, um, really allows us to, to deliver that seamless experience of just like instant compute when you want it, it goes away, you know, only pay for what you use, very few knobs to turn and things like that. And so people absolutely love that, that factor. The other is multi-cloud. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of uh, organizations out there that have a multi-cloud strategy and you know what that means to them can be highly variable but regardless they want to be able to interact across clouds in some some capacity and of course we are a single platform like literally one one single interface consistent across all the the the, the three cloud providers that we work upon and it gives them that flexibility to mix and match uh, cloud infrastructure underneath snowflake however they see fit the last piece of it is sharing, um, and um, you know I think we are, it's it's that ability as I kind of alluded to around like breaking down organizational silos and allow people to be able to actually connect with each other in ways that you couldn't do before. Like if you think about how you and I would have shared data before, I'd be like, hey Dave, I'm going to unload this table into a spreadsheet and I'm going to send it over an email. And there's a whole host of issues that get introduced in that in world. Now it's like instantly available. I have a lot of control over it's 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 governed it's all these other things um, and I can create kind of walled gardens so to speak of, of how far out I want that to go it could be in a, in a controlled environment of organizations that I want to collaborate with 
or I can put it on our marketplace and, and expose it to the whole world because I think there's a value in that and if I choose, I can monetize it, right? So, so those, you know, the, the ease of use aspect of it, absolutely, it's just a fantastic platform, the multi-cloud uh, aspect of it and, and our unique differentiation around sharing and our marketplace and monetization. Yeah, on the sharing front, I mean, it's now discoverable. Like if you yeah. send me an email, like what was, what'd you call that? When did you send that email? Yeah. And, then, and then the same time I can forward that to somebody else yeah. who's not governed. Yeah. All right, so that just be, creates a nightmare for the compliance. Right. Yeah, you think about how you revoke access in that situation. You, you just don't, right? <laughs> you now don't, I can just turn right? it off and you don't, you, you go in to run your query, your you don't get to access to that data anymore. Yeah, okay, and then the other thing I wanted to ask you, Clark, is I mean, Snowflake started really as an analytics platform, simplifying data warehousing. You're moving into that world of, of data science, you know, the whole data lake movement, bringing those two worlds together. You know, I was talking to Benoit about this, maybe there's a semantic layer that helps us kind of talk between those two worlds. But you don't care, right? It's if it's in an object store, it can play in both of those worlds, right? That's right, yeah. It's up to uh, you to figure it out and the customer, yeah. but from a storage standpoint, there it yeah, is, it's, serve it up. It's the, and that's the, that's the thrust of this announcement, right? Is, is bringing together two great companies um, the Dell platform, the Snowflake platform, and allowing organizations to bring that together, and they decide. Like, it, it, as we all know, customers decide how they're going to build their architecture, and so this is just another way that we're helping them uh, leverage the, the capabilities of our two great platforms. Is this push or pull, or a little bit of both? I mean, where'd this come from? Were customers saying, hey, it would be kind of cool if we could have this? Uh, or is it more, hey, what do you guys think? You know, <laughs> where, where are you at with that? It was definitely both, right? I mean, yeah. so we certainly started with, uh, you know, a high level idea that, you know, the technologies are complementary, right? I mean, as, as Clark just described. And at the same time, we had customers coming to us saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm doing this over here and this over here, how, do, can, how can I make this easier? Um, so that was, like I said, we started with a blank sheet and lots of long customer conversations and this is what resulted, so. So what are the sequence of events to kind of roll this out? Um, you said it's second half. You know, when do you start getting customers involved? Do you, have you already, you know, to, to, to poke at this? And what's that look like? Yeah, sure, I can weigh in there. So absolutely, um, we've had a few of our, our big customers that have been involved sort of in the design already, who are, uh, understand how they want to use it. Um, so I think our expectation is that now that the, the sort of demonstrations have been in place, we have some pre-functionality, we're going to see some initial testing and usage, some beta type situations with our customers, and then second half, uh, we'll ramp from there. It's got to be a huge overlap between Dell customers and Snowflake customers. I mean, it's 100 billion, you can't not bump into <laughs> Dell somewhere. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know? So where do you guys want to see this relationship go? Kind of how should we measure success? Maybe you could each give your perspectives of that. I mean, for, for us, I think it's really showing the value of the Snowflake platform in this, this new world where there's a whole new ecosystem of data that's accessible to us, right? So seeing those organizations that are saying like, look, I'm, I'm doing new things with on-premises data that I didn't think that I could do before, or I'm driving efficiency in how I do analytics and data engineering and data science in ways that I couldn't, couldn't do before because they were locked out of using a, a Snowflake-like technology, right? So, so I think for, for me, that's going to be that real excitement. I'm, I'm really curious to see how the, the collaboration and the, and the sharing component comes into this, you know, where um, you can think of, of having uh, an on-premises on data strategy and a need, right, but you can really connect to cloud native customers and partners and suppliers that, that live in the Snowflake ecosystem, and that wasn't possible before. And so that is, that is very conceivable and very possible through this relationship. So seeing how, um, how those, those edges, edges get created in, in our world and how people start to collaborate across data both in the cloud and on-prem is going to be really exciting. I remember I asked Frank, it was kind of early in the pandemic, I asked him, come on and tell me about how you're managing things, and he was awesome, and I asked him at the time, you know, you ever going to do, you know, bring this platform on prem? He's like unequivocal, no way, that's never going to happen. We're not going to do a halfway house, we're cloud only. And I kept thinking, this guy, but this guy, they got to be a way to expand that, Tim, there's so much data out there. And so boom, now we see uh, the answer. Martin, from your standpoint, what, what does success look like? I, I think it starts with our partnership, right? So I've been doing this a long time. Probably the first time I've worked so closely with a partner like Snowflake, joint customer conversations, joint solutioning, making sure what we're building is going to be really truly as useful as possible to them. And I think we're going to let them guide us as we go forward here, right? You mentioned you know, systems of record or other potential platforms. 
we're going to let them tell us where exactly the most value will come from this, uh, the integration between the two companies. Yeah, follow the data. I mean, remember in the old days, you would, uh, uh, a hardware company like Dell would go to an ISV like Snowflake and say, hey, we ran some benchmarks. Your software runs really fast on our hardware. Can we work together? You go, yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. But wow, what a different dynamic it is today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, guys, hey, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. It's great to see you. We'll see you at the uh, Snowflake, Snowflake Summit. Snowflake in, Summit in, in a month June. and a half. Looking yep. forward to that. All right, thank you again. Thank you, Dave. Thanks All right, coming. keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, wall to wall coverage of Dell Tech World 2022. We'll be right back.